This is a Hot Pie Media Original. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the DMP CD Sports Podcast presented by Odd Shark. I'm Chad Fisher alongside my co-host, Tony Farmer. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. We got a friggin' awesome show today. It's okay. You know, just Sorry. interviewing John Stockton, yeah. greatest point guard of all time, Never Hall heard of Famer, him. all-time NBA leader in assists and steals. Never heard of him. Second time on the show. Oh, Can't we're, believe it, dude. We are so excited. Yeah, dude. It's awesome to have him on for a second time. I think we can, uh, we can confidently say he's a friend of the show now. Um, that we get him on a second time, that he's willing to come on. And we're going to have like a, an elongated interview with this guy. This isn't like yeah. a five or 10 minute interview. Yeah. We're talking about a really long interview. So. And for those of you listening on iTunes, pretty much anything besides YouTube, you're going to be treated to an extra long interview with some extra content on the end, things that we can't discuss on YouTube. And if you are listening on YouTube, after you enjoy this interview, make sure you check out that other version because it's going to be 20, 30 minutes longer. And I yeah, think yeah. you're going to enjoy it for you sure. Check that out on iTunes, Spotify. Anywhere else besides YouTube, basically. 30 <laughs> you know other saying? platforms, Pandora, yeah. Stitcher, all those. Yep. Yeah, all that stuff. But this is awesome. This is going to be an awesome interview, man. You and I have uh, been excited about this for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. Haven't been able to tell anybody, kind of just, you know, between you and I are the only people that know about this. And so uh, we've been pre- uh, preparing for this and we got so many awesome questions for this guy because there's so many things that uh, we want to ask him about. There's so much stuff going on in the NBA, uh, how the game has changed since he's played. Um all these different things, man. So it's going to be awesome to talk to him. One of the, the one of the best players of all time, the best yep. point guard of all time. Absolutely, it's going to be a lot of fun. I say we get right to it, man. Yeah. Without further ado, let's yeah. bring John Stockton in. Let's do it. Our guest today needs no introduction. Honestly, he's a two-time Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer. He is the all-time NBA leader in assists and steals by a mile. It's a record that I don't think will ever be touched. He's the greatest point guard of all time. We're super excited to welcome to the DMP City Sports Podcast for a second time. 10-time NBA All-Star, national treasure, and friend of the show, John Stockton. How you doing, brother? Thanks for coming back on. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we're so excited, man. We've got so many questions. So, there's so much stuff to talk about right now. I just want to tell you, John, before uh, we, you know, we've had you on the show before, I just want to let you know that I tell everyone that I meet that I'm friends with John Stockton. This is something that <laughs> has done wonders for my social life. You have no idea I'm getting invited to parties. People are like, hey, who's that guy who invited him? They're like, oh, that's the guy that's friend with John Stockton. Don't worry about him, you know? <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using that. I'm milking that big time, Johnny. Hey, if it works for you, go with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I been love working. It. <laughs> oh, John, in the Last Dance documentary, David Aldridge, Aldridge said of your pass in Game 4 in the 97 Finals, Stockton throws the single best pass I've ever seen a point guard throw. You guys were down one at that time. You threw a dime across the court over two defenders and hit Carl Malone in stride. It was absolutely poetry. If anybody's that seen that highlight knows it. I'm curious, one, was that your favorite John Stockton pass? And two, if you can kind of let us know what was going through your mind at that point, because if you miss that pass, it's trouble. And people are going to be questioning why the hell you made a risky pass like that. Well, first of all, I do remember it. Um, you know, the you, the uh, finals games are all highlighted in your head. You don't, you don't remember the game. I don't remember details a lot, but I remember certain plays and certainly that one. That was a big one in the game. Uh, as for what I was thinking, probably nothing. I mean, that's the beauty of playing is mm. you're, you're, you've thought these things through in your mind all these years and you put yourself in this scenario so many times that when that happens, it just happens. And my old coach in grade school used to say, if you're thinking it's too slow anyway. So uh, probably not a lot of thought, just reacted to what I saw and the ball was out of my hands before I could do anything about it. And, and what are your thoughts once the ball is is in the air? Are you like, oh, this is money, no doubt about it? Or were you like, eh, I, hope I, I hope I put enough on that one? Yeah. I, I mean, if I can guess back, I, I think I, I felt pretty good. It was going to get there, but it wasn't a freebie. I mean, it was, <laughs> Michael Jordan was closing in on it pretty quick. And as you know, he covered ground pretty well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was pleased when it landed in the safe hands of Carl Malone and, and he was able to finish it, but uh, I, I had reasonable amount of confidence anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of the last dance uh, documentary, the, uh, the director went on the Dan Patrick show and he said, quote, I finally got Stockton on the phone after like two years of chasing him. Um, and he said that you told him, I don't want to be a part of a Michael Jordan puff piece. Uh, if that's true, what's your reaction to the director saying that? Did he kind of like, that was probably setting confidence a little bit and he kind of set it out on the, on the air there. But what, what was your, uh, why did you have a reluctance to, uh, to go on the show, but then you eventually agreed to do so? 
Well, I guess you never know. I mean, anytime you get on a show of any kind, you, you, you take a chance. Yeah. Right. And so they're asking for Michael Jordan. And I, I have great respect for Michael. Michael and I, I think we're friends. I mean, at least for my part, we're friends. And uh, even with that in mind, when somebody from a, a show, they're trying to promote Michael, uh, I mean, I don't just want to sit there and go, my Michael, you're wonderful. I, I mean, even though I feel that way, yeah. he is, yeah. uh, it just isn't, it isn't my way. And so I asked him about it. it I don't, I didn't kind of put my, my fist down and say, look, no puff piece or anything yeah, like yeah. that. And I think he countered with the same thing. He goes, we have no intention of making it a puff piece. So I thought it was uh, mutual and uh, I, I, it went well, I thought. And also. also, and also you're a competitor. You don't want to like, it's understandable that you don't want to just be sitting there singing his praises because you were a damn good player in your own right. Yeah. I mean, the, the comparison, you don't really compare when you're doing that, but it's again, you don't, you only stroke a guy so much. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's, he's a great player. Anybody that asks me, I'll tell him I, I mean, he's, he's in the, maybe the top player of all time. I mean, I, I hold him in that kind of regard, but it, it doesn't mean I need to sit around there and, and uh, tell him about it all the yeah, time. Yeah. Tell everybody about it all the time. Yeah. And then did you, did you see the documentary? And if, if so, what was your impression of it? I didn't see it. Oh, wow. um, I, I've heard a lot about it. Of course. I mean, I think everybody else in the country saw it, but uh, uh, no, I didn't see it and uh, didn't even see my portion of it. So I, I just hope it went well. I kept my fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it went well, by the way, it, it was, it was well received. Yeah. Your part was, your parts were great as yeah. well. Uh, John, I want to know why did you only dunk the ball one time in your NBA career? That's probably my, that might be my favorite John Stockton <laughs> stat yeah, yeah, yeah. out of them all. Yeah. Well, my question is, how did you know I even dunked it? One time? <laughs> <laughs> There's no research. video of it. Yeah. So first I went on YouTube and I, I typed in John Stockton dunk. Yeah. I had to go way back. I found an interview with you acknowledging that there was one dunk and you had a great memory. You remembered the game. That's the only evidence that I know of is you talking about it. But I couldn't find a video of it because I wanted to see it. I dunked a few times in practice and I dunked a few times in appearances when the kids got me all fired up, fired up, <laughs> and, uh, ready to go. Uh, I dunked one in a game. It was a game against Cleveland at the old salt palace at late in the game. And like, being me, I didn't want to miss the shot to get the dunk. So it was a pretty tame and weak dunk. And nobody even noticed. I mean, not even the guy, not even one guy stood up on the bench and went, like this. So about, <laughs> that's as good as it gets, guys. So I, well, I keep trying. <laughs> that was at the old Richfield Coliseum? You said uh, Salt no, Palace. No, that was at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake. That was oh, okay. before the Delta Center. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was against Cleveland. but You, you guys there. didn't even know we were in the league back then. <laughs> I, <didn't. laughs> I honestly didn't. I didn't. Uh, but John, in all seriousness, I mean, you had many opportunities to dunk after that, you know, and you prefer prefer the layup. Is, is it a, I know you're not a flashy guy. You're known for not being an attention seeking guy. You don't do a lot of endorsements and things like that. Is that part of it where it's just not necessary for you to, to be flashy? Is that part of the decision making of not to take those opportunities? No, listen, if I could dunk it with ease, I mean, if it was, if it was a shoe in basket, I'd have tried to dunk it every time I got in the paint. I mean, it's just a, it just wasn't the case. So I had to be a little craftier and figure out ways to get it around all the hands without power and through hands. So, uh, you know, you, you go with what you're, what tools you're given. Yeah, exactly. By the way, that's what I tell people when I play in pickup games. I could dunk if I wanted to. I just don't. You know, I want to save these <laughs> knees for the for game number three. You know what I'm saying? Especially we're playing full court. I got to save a little bit for later, you know? <laughs> well, I actually had to prove it once at an all-star game. It wasn't at the game itself. It was at one of the game practices before. And I think Tim Hardy was there, G Gary Payton, uh, Kevin Johnson, I, any combination of those guys. And they're all saying, well, you can't do it. You can't do it. So I oh. kind of had to prove it mm -hmm. and did, but it was again, nothing anybody would shout about. <laughs> what, what was their reaction afterwards? Were they surprised or were they like, damn, kind of hats off to you or what? No, again, kind of the same reaction. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yeah, guys, I mean, that's as good as it gets. If you can't give me a little love, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> oh, I love it. John, the only thing cooler than you not dunking more, even though you could have in games, is the fact that you're not on social media. Even though you could be the king of social media with a ton of followers, people in Utah obviously love you. Why are you uh, reluctant to join the Matrix and be miserable like the rest of us on social media? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, it does feel miserable. I, yeah. I don't know. I still have a flip phone and people make fun of that with. <laughs> I um, love it. You know, without doubt all the time. I mean, it's the first comment. Most people, you got a flip phone, but uh, <laughs> I watch those things and people stare at them. And then when I have had access to it, say I'm traveling and I use one, you get ping, 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 and yeah. all this thing to yeah. grab your yeah. attention. 
it drives me nuts. It's yeah. just not for me. So uh, it's really simple. Um, I'd rather live life face to face and shake people's hands and that's talk awesome. to them and then uh, push the buttons. Yeah. You're true. Sadly, that's becoming more rare these days. Yeah, yeah. Like, like someone saying that is actually a it's rarity, which is, yeah. yeah, it's really refreshing to hear for sure. Uh, John, your career overlap with Kobe Bryant's career and you guys played against each other many times. We just, I just want to know, Tony and I talked about this. Is there anything, what do you remember about playing with him? Is there any memories that you can share about playing with Kobe? Yeah, I mean, there, there's one that isn't that fun. I, I remember he was a young player. We were playing in uh, the Delta Center. It was late in the game. It was a knockdown, drag out game. And he drove middle and I, I swiped at the ball and I kind of got my finger caught between his knees as they were, you know, he was coming to jump and mm. it snapped that finger. So I dislocated my, my trigger finger. Oh, no it, kidding. Split the skin, it split the skin from there to there and the trainer took it and opened it up and you could see the flexor tendons in oh, it. Oh. Coach is saying, can he go back in? Can he go back in? And <laughs> trainer said, no, this guy, this guy's done for tonight. So oh. I mean, that's one memory that comes to mind. I mean, certainly we all have great memories of watching him uh, perform and the amazing things he did in finals and playoffs game. He was, he was really a competitor without a doubt. Yeah, he really was. And then I was, yeah. yeah. And do, 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 you, do you see any similarities? I mean, you played against him and Jordan. What similarities did you see between the two of those guys? Well, I, I honestly think, Kobe, I, I, can't, I can't swear to this, but I, I think he had Michael Jordan videos on in his yeah. house from the time he was six years old. He walked mm. like him. He talked like him. He kind of chewed his gum like him. Yeah. His game was similar. I mean, mm. I, I think he, he channeled him. You know, he tried to be as much like Mike to use the saying as, as he could. And mm. yeah. Worked out pretty well for him. Yeah, I think Michael Jordan said in an interview that uh, he thinks that's the only guy that could kind of give him a game one on one because he said Kobe stole all of his moves and everything. So that's <laughs> I guarantee me. he knew him. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. That's right. I, I always thought that too that he mirrored him and his uh, idiosyncrasies and his and his uh, movements and everything like that so much more so than any player I've ever witnessed in my in uh, in my life. But what was your reaction, John? Obviously, when Kobe died, obviously it was incredibly sad. But it was a guy that you shared the court with for many years. Yeah, and I had seen him not too much beforehand. We were we were going somewhere to a game, and, and my whole family bumped into him. He couldn't have been more gracious. Shook hands with everybody, and mm. including my son, who was waddling around in like a, a knee brace or something at the time. So, ah. uh, yeah, it was a it was a pretty stark uh, moment. We were walking into the gym. We were getting ready to play hoops, and and somebody you know on their phone it pinged. Mm-hmm. And I just remember the the deathly science silence among everybody. Wow. Kind of everybody went into their own thoughts and um, sad, uh, obviously sad. And, and yeah. you, you know, then we had all the great responses from people that who were honoring him. I, I, an old teammate of mine, Thurl Bailey, said a uh, a song that he sang about losing uh, Kobe. It was marvelous. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know; those, those things are shows you you know what impact that young man had on so many of us. Yeah, I was in L.A. at the time of his passing, and it was such an eerie feeling. The night before, uh, there was a lot of fog. I was in West Hollywood at the Comedy Store, and there was it was incredibly foggy that day. The next day, too, I've been to L.A. probably 30 times, and I've never seen weather like that. And then the next day, just the eerie feeling walking around L.A. and everything like that. You could tell it was just like the whole city was just mourning. It was crazy. Yeah, na- nationally, too, all yeah. over the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Special guy, special player, and uh, what a tragedy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, switching gears a little bit, John. In the NBA today, players have a lot more power to kind of build teams themselves, almost like the players are GMs in a way through free agency. And that really wasn't the case when you played, um, or if it was, it wasn't as public. I'm curious, was there ever a time in your career where you attempted to kind of influence the Jazz front office or say, hey, we should get so-and-so on this team. Uh, we could be a powerhouse if we just had this additional piece, that sort of thing. No, I, I stuck to my job. I mean, I trusted the guys with the Jazz. They they did great work. They had from the before I got there, they picked a good team that we, you know, that we could grow with. And I had faith in them. I had faith in our coaches and, and uh, my job was tough enough to, to try to do it well. So I concentrated on that. I never offered a suggestion ever in, in my career. Um, once late in my career, they asked if I like, would like to play with Jeff Hornacek later in my career. They asked if I'd like to play with Jeff Hornacek. It was after the trade deadline that, that day. Mm. And I said, well, yeah, who wouldn't? I mean, that's, he's a great player. <laughs> And they said, well, congratulations. He's your new teammate. Oh, wow. That was the closest we came to, to that discussion. And so that was a fun one, though. Wait, what if you had said no? It sounds like it was like bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry Miller, Larry Miller, our owner, was kind of special. I think he could read my mind anyway. So, yeah. uh, 
he knew that was going to be a good pickup. Absolutely. Um, what, what is your assessment in that, and what's, what's it doing to the NBA? I, my opinion is that, personally, I don't like it. I don't care for it. It's uh, kind of making a lot of these other teams like the Washington Generals, so to speak. You know what I mean? Where there's only certain the people only want to play in Brooklyn or New York and L.A. and Miami and stuff like that. And a lot of these other teams are forced to, obviously, small market teams to build through the draft and everything like that. But I don't feel like it's this is a good thing for the NBA. For example, one thing with LeBron. I love LeBron. I'm a big Cavs fan. Uh, I've liked him and followed him for most of his career. One thing that I think people don't talk about is that when he goes to these organizations, he goes there and, of course, they're in win-now mode, but these these organizations exhaust all their resources for years to come. And then when he wins, everyone says, oh, my God, LeBron's the best. Well, then he leaves, and those teams are terrible, and they have no capital. They have no draft capital. They have no assets whatsoever. And then they're in the doldrums of the NBA for four or five years. And they say, oh, see, look what happens. You know, when LeBron leaves, they're terrible. Obviously, he's a great player. But when you get to influence uh, the personnel decisions, for some of these teams, I feel like it's hurting the NBA. And I just want to get your opinion on that. Yeah, I'm not living it every day. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what it's like to sit in that front office and have things dictating it, dictating to you uh, like a player. I mean, it appears that LeBron is. I don't know for sure that he is, but it, it appears so. Uh, I think it would be it'd be maddening as a teammate to know that you you could be expendable for one of his guys that he thinks he needs to play mm, with. Um, the iffiness it causes with the team, the iffiness it causes upstairs. I, I don't, I don't like it either. Um, I mean, I, I just, I like kind of uh, brag on Michael Jordan here a little bit. And I think us, we were, we were a similar ilk with the jazz is I like where guys just tighten their belt up and say, you know what, let's go to work. We just got to get better. Yeah. We got to play harder. We got to play smarter instead of just, huh? Where's the grass greener? I'm going to go there yep. and win a championship. Yep. I, I think it devalues that. You're not climbing the mountain. You're taking the helicopter to the top. Of totally the agree. So, um, so yeah, again, I'm not a fan of it, but that's, you know, who cares? Who yeah, cares yeah. what I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Support for the DMP CD Sports Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. They're the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawn Mower 4.0. You heard that right. The 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for our listeners. You're going to get 20% off and free worldwide shipping when you enter the promo code DNP at manscaped.com. It's the holiday season yeah, too, man. You got This get, is the time to do it. Get it for your loved ones for yeah, sure. If, uh, if you're, uh, you got a boyfriend, a husband. You know what I'm saying? It's got it's got a little too much bushes down there. You want to get that taken care of, man, because you never you feel go. more confident and sexy, man, when you're nice, sleek, trimmed and everything like that, man. It's true. I, I know that uh, after I use Manscaped, I don't even put draws on afterwards, man. I just start walking around the house just, you know, trying to entice my girl just a little bit. <laughs> hey, I don't know if you saw this fresh, clean booty back here, Bend Bending over to pick stuff yeah. up. Yeah, she's like, wow, his butt is like really, really <laughs> smooth. I'm like, yeah, you know. You know, I've been using Manscaped a little bit. People don't know. We actually, we are some of the first people to get the 4.0 yeah. and actually test it out. The thing's got like a headlight on it. Mm -hmm. It's waterproof. It's really, really cool. And, and it's it's a shave like you've never had before, for real. Yeah, it's not, man. A lot of times with other razors and trimmers, you get a lot of nicks and cuts and everything like that. I didn't have any with Manscaped. Man. Yeah. It was perfect for me. A lot of times, man, there's been times before I use trimmers and you, you know, uh, uh, nick your balls man you know what i'm saying then you start it's something thinking people don't talk about but it's a real thing yeah, it is dude and it hurts like hell for <laughs> yeah. days man yeah. it hurts to sit it hurts all this stuff it hurts to be intimate you know what i'm saying you got someone just tugging on your on your junk and you got like a little a little nick down there man start thinking you got your period a little earlier or something like that i don't know if you <laughs> can i borrow a tampon babe you know what i'm saying because i done nick my balls you know what i'm saying oh. you don't want to do that the lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with sizes one through four. So you don't got to like, a lot of people think, oh, you get Manscaped, it's got to be all the way down to the skin. You don't have to do that, man. There's different guard lengths. So you can do whatever size uh, you want, whatever uh, hair length you want. Uh, if you've been, men, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, that's gross. You've been doing it wrong. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. I mean, I know a few people that don't mind it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But me personally, I don't want that. No, you know thank what I'm saying? you. No. And you do start doing that. You start using the same one on your face. It smells a little funky, dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You start going, bang. Is that yeah. my upper lip? No, dog. That's your ball trimmer. You need to get something different. You should be using the same thing on your face as you do your balls, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you got to get Manscaped, uh, the Lawnmower 4.0. We're, like we said, we're one of the first people to try this out. It's awesome. Yeah. We love it. Could not recommend it more highly. Um, 
It's time to get your own ball hair and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice, smooth boys. Like we said, uh, you're going to get 20% off and free shipping worldwide when you enter the promo code DNP, as in did not play, at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Trust me, they will. And your girl will, too. Indeed. And somebody else's girl. Or your boy, whatever you're into. Or your boy. Yeah, or someone else's wife. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, Who knows? Whatever exactly. you, whatever you, however you get down. That's not my business. Exactly. It's not Manscaped's business. They don't care. They just want you to feel nice and clean. Exactly. Yeah. John, can you tell us who's the most underrated player you've gone up against, or at least someone who maybe you feel like doesn't get the respect on their name that it is, they deserve? Maybe they're not in the Hall of Fame and should be, or, or you just think the general fans don't give them enough credit? Well, um, boy, there'd be a lot of guys that would fit into that list. Mm. Uh, you know, Buck Williams was, yeah. I don't know why he comes to mind. He mm. was, he was a, a tremendous player that fit in on teams and still did his stuff and made them all better. We talked about Jeff Hornacek. Yeah. Um, yeah. I played with him and I played against him. So I, I have a sense that that's, that that's definitely true. Um, Gosh, Mark Price, I think mm. not a, he was with the, he was, he was a difficult play for me. And maybe it was cause it was two short white guys kind of pounding at each other a little <laughs> bit, but, uh, uh, he was always a load for me. And then, and then and there's so many other guys that are just great players and you already know it. Um, John, yeah. John, in that 1994 playoff season against the Spurs right down the road from us, that, that series was bonkers. Jerry Sloan got ejected. Several players were ejected during the series. Dennis Rodman got a cheap shot on you and was, uh, was uh, removed as well. Um, you shoved David Robinson to the ground. Can you just take us back to that series? People online call it a body slam. I, I, I don't know if you're, if you're okay with the characterization of a shove. Can you take us back to that series um, and, and just – how did that boiling point get reached? Was there stuff going into that playoff series left over from the regular season or just kind of what, what brought it to those boiling points? Well, I'll get to that part of the question, but I want to respond to I want you to hear what you said. I put David Robinson. <laughs> That's not possible, right? What are the chances, ladies and gentlemen, that I pushed? So, okay, but I would say that. baby man, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wait, so, so you do remember? The, go ahead. I are, are, are you are you denying that it was a push? Totally. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Here's how it goes down. This is my view, and David's a good friend. And I love his family, and you know we we can joke about this now. But we have a play where I go across set a screen for Carl to come to the ball. So I set the screen, and David Robinson, I, I you know he he sees me coming a mile away, and he grabs me, he throws me into the first row. Okay, mm. that's play one. Yeah, foul on John. Well, how'd that happen? Yeah. Like, so now I'm mad. Yes. So now I'm mad. And coach Coach says, "Well, we're going to run this play." I said, "No, we're running that play again." So. <laughs> We go run the play again, and I tell myself, because I got this from our trainer at Gonzaga, he'd say, you need to anchor yourself to the center of the planet when you don't want to be moved. And so I said, all right, I'm going to anchor myself to the center of the planet. Mm. And I went over there, and I set the screen, and I wasn't <laughs> going to be budged. And if you watch David, he grabs the back of my head and tries to throw me again, and his hands slid off my head. And, of course, my arms go with it, ah. but he goes down. So you just need to check the table. All right. Right. All right. We need to <laughs> watch this again. my story and I'm sticking to We're, it. All right. I like it. I like it. I'm going to watch the tape again with this perspective yeah. in there. I love that determination, John. That was just you in a nutshell, brother. Just uh, your career in a nutshell that you called, that you told Coach Sloan, no, we're running that play again. And you said, I want round two of this action with David Robinson. Coach, I I, never, I don't think I corrected coach, but maybe not corrected, but changed the play, but twice. That was one of them. So it was yeah. pretty memorable. I, that's why wow. I remember. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. In all those years, just a couple I times. I still remember wow. that series. I was yeah. only nine years old at that time, but I remember that st series vividly. Absolutely. I remember the Alamo Dome. I remember that big time. Yeah. Such an awesome. Well, you asked the question, what led up to it? Well, yeah. we played the Spurs six times a year, not counting playoffs, and we kept playing them in the playoffs, and we were always one and two in that stretch. For and in fact, one year we were tied for the best record mm -hmm. in the league, uh, and they got the tiebreaker. That was the lockout year. So I mean, it was always 
it was always like this. They were a great team. We were a great team. So there was plenty to fight for. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I don't know how welcome you are in San Antonio. Have you uh, been back many times since retirement? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I try not to travel NBA cities too much. <laughs> holds a grudge. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. That's fair enough. Uh, how about the Rodman cheap shot? I, I, I mean, I haven't heard his perspective years later after reflection, et cetera. Maybe I shouldn't call it a cheap shot. Maybe that's not fair of me. I wasn't on the court that day. But he, he got you pretty good, man. And you were you were injured a little bit there. So so talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I don't remember the cheap shot, to be honest. And, that, and that's the truth. I, I remember, I mean, he was always doing something. I mean, we know yeah. we, we knew what he was about. And that was that's what showed up on the recruiting, on the recruiting trip, but the uh, scouting report, mm -hmm. you know, keep your composure, keep your composure. Mm. I, actually, what I think I remember about that one is either that time or another time with them is he, they thought he headbutted me. Mm. And the league called and asked me, said, well, you know, Dennis, he, Dennis uh, headbutted you. I said, no, no, he didn't. He said, John, we got it on tape. He headbutted. I said, he didn't. Oh, wow. And so they kept going, kept going. And, and I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, if he headbutted me, I don't know about it. And so oh, wow. that's where that one ended. I mean, who knows? It's uh, the tape never lies, I guess, but uh, depends on how you look at that's it. That's awesome, man. You're so <laughs> honest about it still, because that would that would have been big for you guys. You know what I mean? Get them out a game or two or something like that. Or uh, it came them. after either way. It yeah, was yeah. it was a matter of fines, not a matter of suspension. Okay, back okay. Then. Let's let's face it. You'd have to you have to have an arm, you know, bone sticking out of your arm to get somebody <laughs> penalized back in those back days. Back then, yeah, yeah. That's a that's actually what I want to ask you about next is because a lot of people say that Steph Curry is the best shooter of all time. I want to know one, who is the best shooter in your mind, and then two follow up question is the the NBA has changed how they officiate games drastically. You can't hand check anymore. You can't put. You can't really be physical. I, I, I will say, watching the NBA this year, they have changed a lot of rules and it's gotten a lot better. I will say that. But you can't hand check as much anymore. Who's somebody that you play with, or, or also you're just yourself? How great of a shooter would you have been? Because you were pretty good in your own right if you were able to play as freely as some of these guys are today in the NBA. Well, there's certain parts of that that are appealing to to be able to play without getting touched. I mean, you're right. It was back in the day. You you fought over screens. You you were grabbed, held, nudged, and and it was all legal. And and it, it would take its toll on just about any shooter. I, I think Steph Curry can adjust anything. So. Mm. Would it impact him? You bet. But would he adjust? I think so. Yeah. Uh, great shooters of our time. Uh, Larry Bird was one of the greatest shooters under duress, under, you know, contact, under whatever. Uh, Ray Allen is one of the pure, oh, most pure good one. shooters that, I, that I've seen. I mean, it just looked this, absolutely the same every time. So mm. there's just a couple. Yeah. John, last year, uh, Steve Kerr said of you, um, I have great respect for him. I see him away from the court. I love him. Great guy. But he was a dirty bastard, he said. Uh, what is your response to Steve's characterization of your defensive play and your defensive style? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I wish he would have kept. I wish he, I, anyway, it is what it is. I didn't play dirty. Yeah. And people can take it, you know, that's, that's me. You, you always sound, uh, when you're trying to defend yourself, you sound worse than you could ever sound doing anything else. But uh, played by the rules. I played hard. I mean, you're a little guy out there. It's dog eat dog guys stick knees out to, to screen you. Yep. Um, if you're meek, you're going to be end up on the floor every time and you can't call the play to go back to it, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, it, he, he reads it his way. I just say, look, I, I, it's, I can't let them win by physical play. Yeah. Yeah. And so I like to think that I met the challenges rather than I was a dirty rascal. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I like scrappy. How, yeah, how's yeah. that? Is that scrappy? Scrappy. Like scrappy. Yeah. Tough, yeah. tough, man. Yeah, you know absolutely. I'll say that. Tough. Yeah. And I, and I know you're not going to say it, John, cause I know you don't like to talk, uh, 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 junk about other players and everything like that, but I'm just gonna say Steve Kerr was soft as hell. That's what his deal was. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Ouch. <laughs> Time to toughen up. If you saw about my man John Stockton here, you know what I mean. Maybe get in the weight room, Stevie. You know, we, we got your back, John. We'll say things you can, my friend. <laughs> Even Steve and I never had physical confrontations. That's for sure. You yeah. know, he's a shooter. He's he's one of those snipers up yeah. there in the castle. You know, and yeah. uh, he was great at it. Yeah. And it won. So, I mean, yeah, terrific job for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John, I want to ask you about Gonzaga because uh, – and what it was like before you got there. Now they're look, looked at as a powerhouse uh, preseason number one this year. They're obviously going to have a really good team this year. you got the number one player in the country, Chet Holmgren. Uh, uh, Drew Timmy is back. They've got a great squad. But what was Gonzaga like before you got there and now seeing it transition into this massive powerhouse program? 
can't really fathom the change when you, when you, mm. if I stop and think about it, it's, it's ridiculous. We, we, when I started there, um, it was difficult to fill the house. Uh, we probably filled the, the, our 3000 bleacher seat stadium twice a year for a couple of years. Uh, and that was only against great teams when a ranked team came in to play that. I mean, that would have been university of San Francisco at the time with Quentin Daly, or it had been the university of Idaho, uh, with coach Munson down there and, not with those games were a blast, but they were few and far between. Um, you know, we, we were always above 500, but it wasn't always easy to be above 500. We were always scrapping. We ran flex, you know, try to get easy shots. It, it, we had one set of road uniform. We had one set of home uniform that had been there for, you know, the guys warm seven years before I got there. Mm. I wore their uniforms. We had wow. no mirrors or towels in the locker room. We shared a shower with the inner mural room around through it, wow. through a locked door. Uh, it just, it just, there is no comparison. Wow. Yeah. And you're saying they fly charter jets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, they would have food served to them after practice. Wow. Food served to them yeah. after games. Are you kidding me? I mean, we were yeah. top ramen out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I think there's a stray bag of Cheetos back, back behind the bleachers. Exactly. If you guys want to go. Grab Twelve dollars a day per diem on the road. We would we would pitch wow. in our money to buy donuts for breakfast. Oh so, wow! Yeah, yeah. It's so different now, but uh, I. I I enjoyed that we fought through that yellow school bus so these guys could have it good. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, because your son played there from 2010 to 2014, so you helped pave the way for him to get all these fancy meals and everything. <laughs> you should be getting a little bit of that steak too, right, John? <laughs> well, I don't think we paved any of the way. We, we, uh, we got what we deserved. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the guys paved the way. Yeah, that's wild that you talk about the the sharing of uniforms from years early. That sounds like little league, man. That's yeah. like my little league town yeah. growing up using the same uniforms. I wonder who the lucky freshman was that got John Stockton's yeah. those uh, jersey shorts. Yeah. and those oh, shorts too, next man. Year. Just next sauntering year. around Woo. the campus, you know what I mean? <laughs> all the ladies trying to hit on him. <laughs> you know what? He'd be a hit. That's all I can say. <laughs> I gotta tell you, John, since we had you on our show, I, I wore my my what I call my Stockton's my shorts in honor of you. And now I've been wearing them all around town. You wouldn't believe the, I'm getting cat called. Like you wouldn't believe brother. It's crazy. I'm so proud of you. Right <laughs> I can't, anytime I see a construction site, I have to go the other way because it's just nothing but cat calls, man. <laughs> I'm not going to put up with this anymore. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it gets older Poor guy. after a while. People just seeing you in that, in that yeah. view. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. It gets old after a while. It's like, oh yeah, we get it. You like the way You guys are too much. You guys are too much. <laughs> We're super excited that DMP CD Sports Podcast is presented by BetterHelp. That's BetterHelp.com. This is an awesome service, man. You want to go there. There's a, there's a perfect time of year to do this, too. It's the holiday season. A lot of people, you know, have gone through a loss of a loved one. Some people are fighting lo loneliness and everything like that. That's why it's awesome to go to BetterHelp. You can Get do all therapy. this. Yeah, you can do all this online. Um, it's professional therapy done online. It's not self-help. None of that. It's professional therapy done securely online. And you don't have to leave the comfort of your own home, man. A lot of times when you go to a therapist, you got to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. You got people coming in and out Traffic. judging you. Yeah, judging you. I wonder what's wrong with him. He yeah. looks crazy. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to deal with that. At Better Help, you can do all this at home. You might have to talk to your therapist about this, but you could probably do it in your draws. You yep. know what I mean? At least maybe put a cover FaceTime, over FaceTime, phone yeah. call, text. They're available 24 hours. Yep. You can you can contact them 24 hours, and they're going to get back to you quickly. Yeah, and this is an awesome offer that we have for our listeners. If you go to BetterHelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com, you're going to get 10% off your first month of therapy when you enter our promo code DNP. That's an awesome deal, man, and this is a perfect time to do it. It's the holiday season. Everyone goes through a little... You know, a little blues, so to speak, now time now uh, nowadays during this time of Indeed. year. So make sure you go to BetterHelp. That's H E L P dot com. And enter promo code D N P to get ten percent off the first month of uh, therapy. All right, we hope that you're enjoying this interview so far with John Stockton. Uh, we've asked a lot of basketball questions so far. It's been a blast. We're going to cut the YouTube version of this interview short now, but we've got a lot more content on our other platforms. I'm talking iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, all those. Check us out, DMP CD Sports, on those platforms to get about 25 or 30 extra minutes with John Stock. There he is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the best point guard of all time. Number one in assists, number one in steals by a country mile. No one's touching those records for a long, long time. 
So awesome to have him on our show twice now, dude. Best point guard of all time, man. I feel like that was the best interview of all time. Yeah, that, that was, was great. Yeah. Incredible. That was a great interview. Oh my goodness gracious. We definitely put a lot of time and effort into that. And it was awesome oh. to be able to talk to him. He's so gracious with his time, uh, spending almost an hour with us to talk oh. about all these important issues and the NBA in general. I mean, we touched on Kobe. We touched on the Last Dance documentary. Um, we touched on, uh, how about the story of going up against David Robinson yeah. and him telling Coach Sloan, no, no, run that same yeah, play again. Yeah. And Coach Sloan be like, all yeah. right, you're John Stockton. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to say to John Stockton? And just his toughness, man. Because yeah. David Robinson is a seven-footer from Navy. You know what I mean? This guy is not a pushover. Uh, back in the day, I mean, he was one of the biggest guys in the NBA. And for John to say, no, I want to run that play again, not being deterred by what happened on the, pri the play prior and going to set another screen, that's the type of player he was, man. I mean, I remember watching him play so much as a kid. And that's how he was, man. He was just a tough guy. And I think that despite the fact that he's number one in assists, number one in steals by a mile, my favorite stat of his, dude, is honestly 22 games in 19 years. And 18 of those was in one season. Yeah. So we're talking about four games in 18 years. Wait, you like that stat better than the fact that he's only dunked one time in his yeah. NFL career? I mean, and yeah, I think that's pretty cool too, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they saved them knees, man. It, it worked yeah. for him. You know what I mean? Not uh, trying to... How about that impact jumping off off the court uh, off the rim and stuff, you know? So I, I love that story too at the All Star game where where his uh, his All Star teammates were like, "No, nah, no, show us. We want to yeah, see that yeah, you yeah. can you yeah. prove it, prove yeah. it." That and, was hilarious. and there's guys that was similar ilk, you know, Kevin Johnson. He said Gary yeah. Payton. Those are guys that are about the same size as him. Sure. And for him to get up and uh, throw that down, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't believe they just gave him a little golf clap though, man. I've been hooting. I've been going crazy. Holy shit, John Stockton oh, just dunked, man. He's hilarious. That's awesome. He's, he's such hilarious. a cool, guy, yeah. such a cool guy, such an approachable guy yeah awesome awesome individual and let uh, me say this too man he's a great speaker too yeah. man i don't know if anybody's ever seen his hall of fame speech yeah if you haven't seen john stockton's hall of fame speech youtube it right now yeah. man he's hilarious he makes jokes in there kind of a dry sense of humor he said in his hall of fame speech he's never been the best player on his team that's remarkable. college nba i mean so humble wow. so humble yeah um but but just a, a great speech it's he can so, do it all it's so funny that he's so humble and yet he's the nba's all-time leader in assists and steals i know it's crazy i know it's wild it's i'd wild. be a jackass if i was dude i'd just be going around like you know taking people's tables at restaurants <laughs> and stuff like, hey, hey, you might want to move out of the way. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm eating here. You're like, doing yeah, that just because yeah. you're friends with him. You're yeah. already doing that. Oh, yeah. That. I go around just slapping people. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. I just slapped you in the face. They're like, he's why'd you do that? He's actually John Stockton I'm, and he's not doing those I'm things. I'm friends with John Stockton. I kind of do whatever the hell I want around here. You know, I don't know if you got the memo. But, oh, how yeah. about this? How about we also learn that he doesn't have a smartphone, which yeah, I loved. We knew he cool wasn't stuff. on social media. Yeah. Dude's one of a kind. We're just, we're never going to see another John Stockton in the NBA again. I think John has the last flip phone uh in and human history right now there's only one it's like hanging on by a thread it's just a little old motorola phone and he takes it in they're like dude we don't have we can't replace this people give him shit for it yeah, too. yeah said, i love it that's love awesome it. man it's hilarious and we usually uh at the end of the interview we always plug there's the the guest social media and stuff like that and john doesn't have any of that which is also so cool dude. yeah yeah i envy that i wish that i could be in that situation unfortunately you know we have to do that with our show and everything like that and promoting this and everything but yeah. Uh, yeah, he has no social media, which is crazy because he could be huge. Um, it's just awesome to talk to him about all these things, uh, get the inside scoop on that that 94 series with the uh, San Antonio Spurs wow. and the Alamo Dome. That was awesome. Uh, get that information. And then also his thoughts on Kyrie Irving and Aaron yeah. Rodgers and everything like that. So it's yeah. just awesome Saluted interview. Kyrie Irving. That was yeah. really cool for just sure. Awesome, awesome interview, man. Just an awesome guy. So cool. So cool to say that we've had him on twice and hopefully – We'll have him on again uh, in the near future. Yeah, yeah, he was he was incredible. That was my my head is still spinning yeah, because it was yeah. such it was such a good interview. By the way, you mentioned that he doesn't have uh, social media, so we can't plug that. He does have a book though. His yeah, autobiography definitely. is called Assisted. Um, it was written several years ago, but you guys could, should check that out. There was a couple interesting things in the book. One was he was talking about how um, him and Carl Malone were competing to have a lowest body fat percentage because oh, you know, wow. they always worked out mm -hmm. together. And they got it down so low. At one point, the jazz trainers were like, "Nah, you guys got to stop that you gotta shit. Eat something. Like you guys, you guys got to chill with that. Like you're getting like dangerously yeah, yeah. low body fat level." But it was cool hearing about how they just pushed each other and pushed each yeah. other um, to to be in the best physical That's shape crazy, that they dude, could be. You know, John Stockton wasn't known as like this. You know, Carl Malone was known as a workout warrior. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He was looking look like a bodybuilder. Right. Whereas John Stockton was a little bit more slight and 
to know that he has such a low body uh, fat percentage, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It just shows how tough he was, man, because yeah. well, it was 180 pounds soaking wet, 175 of that was nails, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That dude was just a just an animal, man. Just could not intimidate that guy, yeah. it didn't seem like. How about when we asked him about Steve Kerr's quote, Yeah, and he, he bit his tongue. He said, I wish Steve wouldn't, and then he stopped. Yeah. I wouldn't have had that discipline, man. Yeah. Someone called yeah. me a dirty B. Oh. I would not have had that. And oh, he didn't no. know we were going to ask him that question either. That was some discipline on his part. Yeah, it was. Um, ooh, and, and I wonder, I wish I would have asked, I wonder if he was hearing that for the first time. I wonder if he knew that Kerr said that. It was about a year ago. That quote's yeah. not that old. Yeah, yeah. So we may have been breaking the news to him on that one. I'm not he sure. He might be texting Steve Kerr right now. <laughs> like, hey, we're starting some hey, shit. Uh, I just got tickets to a Warriors game. I'll meet you out back, <laughs> asshole. How you like that? <laughs> hey, I'll, uh, I'll uh, hold your jacket for you. You, Johnny, while you take out Steve <laughs> Kerr, it won't be the first time Steve Kerr has been punched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness Probably not gracious. the last either, you know. Uh, but you know I, he I mean? was complimentary of Steve yeah, too. He yeah. said, you know, he's a great shooter, etc. I love that you got the shot in about Steve being soft. Yeah, that that's was hilarious. Say, yeah, you're, like you're saying all this. Maybe you're just soft, Steve. Maybe yeah, that's why you were a seventh and eighth it. man, and you know that what I mean. Could be the and problem. That's maybe why you weren't. Because uh, he went to Arizona, which at that time was a much bigger program and a bigger school than Gonzaga was where Johnny went. Yeah. And so maybe that's why you were eighth man and not uh, the all-time NBA leader in assists and steals yeah. because you just weren't – you're a little too soft. There, Dude, Johnny. I think my favorite part of the whole interview is when he corrected me and he said, listen to what you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that I – pushed David Robinson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And for those of you out there who aren't sports fans, David Robinson, the Admiral, is huge. Yeah. Over seven foot, right? Yeah, how, over how, seven foot. Yeah. yeah, and so, and John's obviously smaller in stature, so um, I am going to go back, as John said, I'm going to watch that video yeah. with his whole, my arms were moving forward and, and all that, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it again, maybe with a, a different appreciation for it. We'll yeah, see. dude. I, I, I don't blame you, he, man. He threw in a that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. So. What's crazy is that I remember that series, man. I yeah. was only nine years old, but I remember that series because I remember watching the Jazz so much uh, during his career. You know, they were always a formidable opponent. They're always, you know, one of the top teams in the West and top teams in the NBA. And so those series against, uh, you know, Utah and San Antonio, Utah and Houston, those were some epic series, man. Yeah. And I, I remember watching those games. And so it's awesome to be able to – it's just crazy. If you'd have told me when I was a nine-year-old kid that someday I'd be able to ask John Stockton yeah. about those very same plays – that I was watching and get the inside scoop. It's it's uh it's truly uh, mind blowing, man. Great interview. Yeah, that was yeah, a lot of fun, yeah. man. Uh, the basketball stuff, that, the vaccine stuff. That was that was tremendous. Yeah, that's by far our best interview that we've Oof. done on here. It's, it's definitely surpassed the first interview we did with John Stockton. Yeah, that was incredible. Um, just awesome because now you see we're more comfortable. All of us are more comfortable with each other. He knows that we got his back, and he's felt comfortable around us. It seemed, and uh, we got a great interview out of it, man. Just an awesome yeah. guy to talk to. Just a just a. Uh, like we said in the intro, man, a national treasure, man. He yeah. is a, a national treasure. One of a kind. One of the, the toughest guys. The court, yeah, pound for, for pound, sure. one of the toughest guys in NBA history, man. No doubt, so, no doubt. That was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, that was a great interview. For sure. Uh, before we go, we're going to tell people about Odd Shark. Yeah. Right? Odd Shark is a uh, oddshark.com is your free source for the latest odds from leading authorities, including expert editorial content. They've got the hottest sports news, they got detailed matchup picks, in depth expert analysis. And the best thing is that it's all completely free. 100% free. No other uh, resource is, is like this in, in sports betting. You got to go there. You want to make sure you're getting the best number. Uh, anytime we do our betting segments, anytime we give numbers, that's where we're getting those numbers from. It's from oddshark.com. Incredibly important because you, you want to make sure you get the best number. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of these sites, they have you know point, point and a half differentiation between sites and everything like that. That's a big deal when you're oh, betting yeah. and you're putting down $100, $200, $300. Thousands of dollars or what have you. You want to make sure you're getting the best lines. So you want to go to oddshark.com. Even if you're not a sports fan, you can bet on any, anything you can think of, man. You can bet on the Oscars. And they'll give you the angles so that you can feel more confident betting those things. You can read great articles on their website, too. We love Oddshark. Can, I can't say enough about them. You can them. bet on Jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's awesome. That's not man. a joke. You literally you can. You literally can bet on Jeopardy, <laughs> which is awesome, man. But For sure. We love Oddshark. Make sure you go there. Check them out. That's oddshark.com. O D D S S H A R K.com. And uh, this is a great. Great. Uh, yeah. Give awesome. us a like. Give us a subscribe. Yeah. If you're listening on iTunes, if you're listening on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear a review from you if you love the episode. And we're going to have some more great guests coming soon. Yeah. You can check us out on all social media platforms. We are at DMP CD Sports. On Twitter, we are at DMP CD Show. Also, go to hotpiemedia.com. Uh, check out all of our past episodes. Also, check out some of the other awesome podcasts that Hot Pie Media produces. Uh, they got pretty much anything you can think of. 
uh, that's where we're coming from right now. And check out our newsletter on hotpotmedia.com yeah. as well. We're going to start putting some uh, sports gambling picks in there in the next couple weeks. So yeah, some insider now. information and everything yeah, like that. Maybe uh, get people. I don't people... want to brag, but I'm 10 games over 500 against yeah. the spread on my Twitter picks. So we're going to move those Twitter picks over to the newsletter. And you guys are going to be privy to some, uh, some, some good picks. And we might. Maybe I don't even know if we discussed this. I'm just telling you this right well, now. I'm live nervous. On air. You're yeah. saying this right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh oh. We're gonna send naked pictures of yourself to every. No, no, no. I'm playing. Uh, no, Nobody we, wants to see that. No, nah, no. Nah. We might. Uh, we might like maybe privy people to who our future guests are gonna be. Yeah. You know, before we tell tease. the public. Yeah. yeah just Absolutely. do a little tease. Just like tell people, hey, we I got. Like that. You know, it'd have been awesome for some people to know, like, hey, we got John Stockton on this week. Yeah, I want to make Coming sure up. you yeah, get, yeah. get a listen in. A little inside information from the DMP CD podcast. Yeah, definitely, brother. So we appreciate everybody watching. We appreciate you listening. Please tell your friends about this show. Give us a follow on all social media platforms. This is a great episode. Can't wait to see who we get next week, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Set the bar pretty high, man. I don't know. I'm trying to see if we let's can get, get Kyrie. Let's see if we can get Kyrie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's hit up Kyrie. That's just, it's that easy. Let's just hit up Kyrie. I'll call him later after this interview. You know what I'm saying? But. Uh, thanks for everyone for listening for watching please tell your friends about the show follow us on all social media platforms leave us a review uh, for Tony I am Chad we'll see you guys next week peace out thanks for listening you can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts